Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Richard the Dick Coughlin. You're going to notice that I'm going to be talking extremely quickly during this video and the reason is I'm responding to a Martin J. Willett video. It's been three months since I last responded to one and I figure he's probably got over the butt hurt that was caused by the few extra thumbs down that he got. I, I don't care how long you've been watching my videos and you might think that you've seen enough of Martin J. Willett videos. I'll link all the other ones up down below. This is the shark jump. I know I say that every Martin J. Willett video. Here is Martin J. Willett's video. It's called Racist? No! And yes, it is exactly what you think it's going to be. Go on, Martin! When I was first called a racist, I was shocked, horrified and outraged. Isn't it interesting that Martin J. Willett remembers the first time he was called a racist? It's not generally one of those first times you remember. And I also don't believe that you were shocked, outraged and offended. You just pretended to be shocked, outraged and offended because you had to, because otherwise then people might realise you are a racist. Also, Martin, the other problem is that in order for you to feel offended and shocked and outraged, you would have to have the ability to feel emotions and have some humanity. No, that's not who I am. Isn't that the most convincing way he said it? No, that's not who I am. It's like... It's like a sort of middle-class Keanu Reeves. I don't hate people of other races. I don't hate people of other races. It's just that I like them more when I can't see them. I don't hate people of different races. I just don't understand them and therefore I'm scared. Keep them away from me. They've got big willies. Don't hate foreigners. I don't hate foreigners. Do you know why? Because foreigners, by their definition, are not in the country. So just stay there. I am not a white supremacist. The reason I'm not a white supremacist is because in this video, I'm about to try and sell you the idea that the government is deliberately trying to destroy the white race and replace it with black disabled lesbians. I'm not even straw manning here. I am still not a race hater. It's like the more you say it, the more I believe it. It's like, have you ever heard the phrase, the lady doth protest too much? But now, I've come to terms with people calling me a racist. Wow, Martin, you finally got used to something that happens to you every single day a million times and which you have made a point of bringing up in almost 95% of your videos, and I'm not making this up. Earlier on, as a bit of research, I got a box, that I went through in his channel, 50 videos I went through. At times, the amount of videos out of that 50 where Martin makes a point of bringing up how he's always called a racist, and then rants on and has a tantrum, telling people how he's not a racist. 47 times. I'm sure if I went through them all, that would probably be about the same ratio throughout all of it. I've had you misjudged. Your entire channel is about you trying to convince everyone else that you're not what you say you are. And I know that everyone else saying you are something isn't an argument that you are, Martin, but isn't it odd that you seem to feel the need to say you're not over and over again? It's what they do. It's also what you do, Martin, because the other interesting thing about all those videos where you whine and bitch about the leftist calling you a racist is in the, that same video, like every other fucking point you make, you will at some point do the exact contradiction of everything you've just said and you will call them racist. You'll say they're the race haters, they're the race traitors. You do it all the time. You do it worse. It is their problem, not mine. It's their problem, not mine. I don't give a fuck anymore. It's, the, it's not like I've just spent the last seven years constantly making videos and I've dedicated hundreds of hours of fucking my life to uploading content where I sit there and t to tell people constantly that I'm not a racist and I'm just getting called a racist anymore. Why do people call me a racist? Why? I, it doesn't bother me. It's like I'm not going to talk about it anymore, which is why I've also made this video. I've made this video talking about it because it, I'm not, I'm not going to be talking about it anymore. I am not going to do it. That is the tool they use to force people to comply with their views or be silenced. If you are fighting for a cause, or championing an idea, or coming on here to say, say something that is important to you, and that you believe in, if at the first sign where people start throwing names at you on the internet, and you don't like it, and you can't handle it to the point where suddenly all of these issues that affect everyone in the world, that are important, all of them suddenly vaporise and go away to nothing, because your feelings, and you not being insulted, matter more, you're a pussy, you're a coward, you're weak, and you never cared about those issues in the first place. In fact, you only used them. You thought you cared about them, but you just wanted to come on here and feel superior to something. You wanted to come on here and make yourself feel better. Some people do throw the word racist and Nazi around far too easily, and I know you think I'm one of those people, but there's a difference, Martin. Because you are a racist, and there is a difference between someone who's being called a racist unfairly and someone who's called a racist constantly throughout their entire life and does nothing but talk about the fact that they're being called a racist. And at no point does the light bulb go and does he stop and look at himself in the mirror. And let's be fair, if I was Martin J. Willett, I wouldn't want to look in the mirror myself. There is no obligation on me to tie myself in knots 
in order to convince people who hate me that I am not a hater. Isn't it tragic, Martin, that you are actually saying that sentence in a video that is literally the one millionth video you've made? He's about to go cross the fucking Rubicon. Maybe, Martin, it's, the problem is not this, that you can't tie yourself in knots or that people hate you. Maybe it's because, A, right, you are a charmless, boring, horrible piece of shit with no charisma, no charm. There's absolutely nothing in you that makes people warm to you or want to listen or trust you. And more importantly, maybe, Martin, it's because you're a fucking racist. It is not possible anyway, not for me. I don't do living a lie. No, you do, you do, you do it every day and you especially do it on YouTube because you know you're lying, Martin, you know you're full of shit, you know everything you say is bollocks. You must know that because you write it down before you say it. And more to the point, you've had me and many others, but mainly me, because let's face it, I'm the one that you hate the most because I embody everything that you fucking hate. And I'm glad about that, Marty, because you embody everything I hate. This is the difference. I'm right, you're wrong, you know it, I know it, and you can't fucking face it. One of the videos you made about racism that I saw is three, is about two, three years old, and in that video you say this same point. You talk about how, I don't care with you, when you're racist. Well, shut up and talk about something other than yourself. Why, after decades of sticking up for myself and my real beliefs, should I now start pretending to believe things I don't, just to keep in with bullies who are taunting me? We're not asking you to believe things you don't, Martin. In fact, I would rather you were more honest. Like when someone in your comment section asked you if you supported the English Defence League and you said, no, I don't support them because they're funded by Jewish money, not British money. So if you're a Jew in Britain, not only does Martin J. Willett think you can't be British, but your money is not worth touching either. It's kind of a weird one. Or let's forget the time that you called Anders Britain a leftist because you are so fucking insecure and so full of shit that you couldn't handle the fact that a guy who had committed that kind of atrocity and unfortunately according to his manifesto he believed in everything you believed. Oh let's not also forget the time that you exploited some tragic story of an eight-year-old white kid who was bullied for six months at school by three Asian nine-year-olds and he committed suicide and you claimed that not only were these three Asian lads who were nine years old not only were they Muslims even though there was no reason to believe they were plus their kids they shouldn't Mm -hmm. Not only that, but Martin asserted that the suicide of this young, this young eight-year-old boy who they bullied was actually part of the plan. That these three nine-year-olds had deliberately set out to bully this eight-year-old until he committed suicide. Why? Because, as Martin said in the video, the Muslims want us to die. They want us dead, the white people dead. And he literally said it is part of the grand scheme of Islam to bring about white genocide. And he thinks three nine-year-old boys had the, had the foresight and the wherewithal to concoct a plan to make another eight-year-old boy kill themselves. That's why people think you're a racist, Martin. You're not just a racist. You're an insane, horrible racist. You're a disease. You are a piece of shit beyond wrecking. There is no substance on this earth so di disgusting enough that I can make a comparison. You're just... Just to keep in with bullies who are taunting me. Don't you dare complain about bullies, you big fat bald fuck. All you've ever done on your channel is defend the fucking powerful, is defend the majority. All you've ever done is have a go at minorities, immigrants, women, the disabled, Right, you've, all you've ever fucking done is gone after the easy target. Why? Because you're weak and you can't sit there and go after the real problem. So you go along with the bullshit that there's this big conspiracy amongst the feminists and the Muslims and the left. Because it's too, it's too easy, that isn't it? It's the easy option is to create the least easy answer. The charge of racism has been used to keep liberally minded people on the straight and narrow. I just want to revel in that moment where Martin J. Willett proclaims himself to be liberally minded. First of all, Martin, not only are you not liberal, you don't really have a mind. It's more of a sort of just a thick piece of meat that pulsates, I imagine. Isn't it interesting how Martin spends all of his time going on about the leftists and the left and how the left are this and the left are Nazis and the left are century and the left are and the left want to do it and the left want to destroy and they can't do this and the left want to destroy your freedom. Uh, but the second people start calling him racist or start calling him right wing, which the reason they do that, Martin, is A, you are a right-wing racist, and secondly, if all you do is spend your time attacking one side of the polit political spectrum, then people tend to instantly think, well, 
Logically, he must be on the other side. It's much like me, mate. I spend most of my time attacking the far right. So people assume immediately that I'm at least on the left, you know, far, reasonably to the left. And they're right. And I don't deny that. Why can't you just admit it? Why do you have to sit there and bash the left and liberals all the live long day, but the second people start associating you with things like racism and eugenics, which you have endorsed, remember, link below to that video, but the second you start getting a little bit too close to the old zig, I, secondly, I'm a liberal. I'm just, I'm just a hippie liberal, man. I'm just, yeah, I'm just want to chill out, man. Just relax, will ya? The path to world socialism and a postmodern nihilist mishmash. I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but I want to play that again because I had to at least three times before I understood what the words he was saying was. Mishmash. Did you just give up with trying to fucking make up words that? I, the path to global socialism. M Martin, have you looked at the world? Have you looked outside your house? Can you see daylight? Are you, are you boarded up in a cellar because you're scared to look outside? Because in 1994 you walked past some Asian geezer or something and he looked at you funny and since then you've been locked up. Have, do you realise how far away, in a general term, of global politics, how far away we are from global socialism? Not only that, mind, but what the fuck is postmodern nihilist... So your pro the problem with the world is, A, there's just this path of obvious global socialism. You can tell that when you look at leaders like uh, David Cameron, Vladimir Putin, uh, you know, Benjamin Netanyahu, or, you know. But postmodern nihilism. What the fuck is that, even? I don't even know what that means. And I should. I'm a sort of arty farty fucker. What is postmodern? Are you saying that the world we live in is one that is functioning on the, on the sort of ideology of postmodern nihilism. Yes, because that's the thing about ISIS, isn't it? That's the thing about the you know, Islamic extremists and all of these religious fundamentalists and all of these radical political ideas. They're just filled with nihilism. They just think that nothing matters. In which white males are permanently apologising for the privilege of being the only group which isn't given special recognition, protection, or allowed to defend itself in any way. Yes, that's one thing. When I look at the world, all I see are white people apologise. No, I see white people insisting Muslims apologise for things that terrorists have done. I mean, I see that. But I do see white men just simply, simply because you were born white and part of the majority and thus would not be subject to the instinctive, natural, prejudicial, uh, blind prejudicial uh, uh, feelings and emotions that you feel as a human being that are the last sort of remnant of our primeval days that we need to let go out. But you, Martin, you've embraced it whole. You've let it kill everything else in your head. It's now the only thing you've got. And don't give me this shit about white men are forced to apologize. When was the last time you apologized for anything? When have you ever said sorry in your life? Have you ever felt sorry for anything? No one's asking you to apologise for being a white heterosexual male. It, they're asking you because you're a cunt and you talk shit and you lie and you spread bollocks because you're a wanker. No, I'm not going to... You couldn't stand up. If you did stand for it, this video would be 45 minutes long with your huffing and puffing, you fucking gelatinous, rotund prick. Yes, I'm calling you fat. Do you know why? Because you are fat. And you're not even fat in a good way. You're fat in a way that says you hate yourself. You're not fat in a way that says you've got character and you enjoy food. Because you can't enjoy anything. You're just a blob. You are a beanbag filled with lard with a swastika on its face. I am a white male. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Round of applause. Well, do well done, sir. It is difficult living your life as the most... Majority sexuality, majority powerful gender, and the majority race, and the majority everything, really. It's difficult being part of the collective majority. It's so difficult. Imagine, Martin, imagine, just imagine how difficult it would be if you were different. And half of my progeny is white male. But your, half of your progeny, what, the guys who did smack my bitch up. But the next thing he says, it's a little bit worried. And I expect that to remain the case. I expect at least 50% whiteness. No less. I'm not going to... I don't let me drop below 50, please. My son didn't receive any favours from the education system. Your son didn't receive any favours from the education system. And this was... was this... did he need them? Was he... was there a reason for it? In fact, here's another thing. Why don't you sit there and explain to me why it's a problem that he didn't get any favours? Explain to me why your son's education and suffered and why he has suffered. What was the problem? I'll carry on with the next point. Don't bother addressing that. His culture was denigrated. What the fuck does that mean? What do you mean? 
the cut did someone chop the head off a queen uh, off the a statue with a queen what did, what happened mine did someone burn a pound note did someone put a stamp up their ass what are you talking about the next bit get this and he was expected to feel apologetic for being english white and male please Tell me one example of any moment in the history of mankind where that has literally happened. Because you are telling me your son went to school every day and he was forced to feel apologetic. Do you know what I think really happened, Martin? Do you know what I think really happened? Is that your son, on account of the fact that he had to live and be brought up by you, unfortunately picked up a lot of your, maybe so we say, traits and politics and ideas and ways of talking. What happened was he came in one day, shit kicked out of him by the one black kid in his class. And you went, well, it's just their way, it's their savages, aren't they? What you don't take into account is the fact that this black lad had just finally snapped because he had gone 12 months and bit his tongue every single time your son walked past him, tickled his afro and called him Velcro head. There used to be a way into the upper classes for smart people. But oh, the heady days when the upper classes were just, you know, the, if you're smart people. Because the, the aristocracy are known for caring about the intelligence of people. It's got nothing to do with tradition and bullshit bloodlines which is what people like you like in it now those opportunities are taken up by middle-class women and the children of immigrants I i'm not even joking here martin j willett is sitting here offended and pissed off at the fact that he's trying to argue that the upper classes of this country are being given some sort of you know allocated affirmative action style uh, quota of, of entrance into the upper classes and if, wouldn't you believe it who has to give up the who has to give up their spaces the white heterosexual men and who gets them the children of immigrants is that like is that like son of chucky or frankenstein's baby what what do you mean the children of immigrants right does that i mean uh, can you not even call them british i mean they were born here you have to call them the children of immigrants. Are they always going to be immigrants? Right. And middle class women. Are you seriously trying to turn middle class women into one of your boogeymen? You know, the minorities, the racial minorities and the gay people and the Muslim. I get that. It makes sense. I get why you do it. It's wrong, but you, I get why you do it. Are you seriously trying to turn people like Delia Smith? And, and fucking Nigella Lawson, or as you would call her, a Jewess. Are you trying to turn them into this group that is basically going to come along and steal all your thunder? Is that it? It's a bloody good idea. The ruling classes have given up on their own people. I know, it's shocking. Who would have thought that the lords of this world and the Tory government and David Cameron would... Who would have thought the Conservative Party, of all parties, would not give a fuck about the poor, the homeless, the needy and the disabled and just say, fuck you all. It's almost... It's, it's, in, it's just literally, I am shocked out of my trousers. Much preferring to import people from overseas with a strong work ethic. Again, I want us just to revel in that sentence. So the elites have given up on the general population of 68 million people in this country. And so what are they doing? According to Martin, they are importing people from overseas who have got a strong work ethic. Now this, my friends, is genius on Martin's part because he's trying to throw me because he thinks I'm going to say, oh, he's going to complain about the immigrants. No, it's not the immigrants. It imported people with a strong work ethic. So now the line is going to be bloody importees being, you know, brought over here, you know, against their will or otherwise, doing our jobs well. Now what mine is about to do is because, you know, when someone's claiming they're oppressed and actually, and they're not the traditionally oppressed group because they're, they're not oppressed, they're not an oppressed group, they're, they're, they're white, heterosexual, cisgendered men and all that other good stuff that we all know about. But here's the thing, what, what these people do, because they're trying to portray themselves as the victim and the ones who are persecuted and oppressed, unfortunately they can't come up with any examples of it because there are none, because they're not, they're just trying to convince you they are because they're trying to validate their own delusion so they can justify why their life went fucking batshit. So what they have to do is instead of coming up with a modern day example, because let's say if the Holocaust was happening down the road, you would just point to it and go look at that, you wouldn't have to say, well, do you remember in World War Two? You wouldn't do that. You would say, look over there, it's happening. Well, what Martin's about to do is about to go back in time. And the rule of this is simple. This is the rule. The further back in time someone has to go to find a good example, the worse and more insane the conspiracy theory is. So who wants to make a bet here as to how far back Martin is about to go? None of you are going to get it close. In the time of the Normans... The fucking Normans. The Normans. The, the Normans. That's how far back he had to go. How... 
How, how long were you on Wikipedia traveling back through that one before you found an example? Why don't you just go the whole hog? Oh, do you remember when we were basically unevolved fish just flapping on the ground? Why don't you just talk about Cro-Magnon man? Today we have a ruling class who style themselves as reformers and even revolutionaries. Yes, Martin. In fact, that is what most politicians do. The reason for it is it doesn't really look good, you know, for you know, in terms of your uh, image. If the government just come along and say, "Hey, everybody, you know how? Do you see how everything is now, right?" That's how it stayed. Right? Fuck you. We're not changing anything. We're not doing anything. Because there's always things wrong with the country, Martin. It's because it's impossible to get right. All of the other parties, which makes up most of the politicians, when there's an election, they have to they have to sort of promise things that the party in power are not going to do, so people might fucking vote for them. Right? It doesn't do any good. You know, Ed Miliband wouldn't have exactly got very far if he'd come out and say, so ladies and gentlemen, the Labour Party get in power, nothing's going to change. We're not going to do shit, so vote for us. So, you know, this is, this is no change you ca definitely cannot not believe in. You thick cunt. Being blind to the true nature of their power is part of their success strategy. They don't like the people who wield power, so they hide from everybody, including themselves, how much power they have. I have listened to that sentence 47 times. I literally cannot figure out what he talks about, what he means, but I do know this. It doesn't matter. It's bollocks. Success in this new elite requires people to be orthodox in their belief. Yeah, yes, Martin. When people want to be successful and part of the elite, they have to be disciplined, uh, they have to have a strong ideology, passionate, and they have to have a very strong will. It's never historically looked good whenever someone's tried to become a leader, if they've come out and gone, uh, well, you know, do what you want, really. Imagine if God had come out uh, with the Ten Commandments and instead it was the Ten Suggestions. Uh, you know, these Ten Things, you know, um, I've got a you know, bit desperate rounding it up, but, you know, you don't have to do them, but if you, you know, maybe... Just try sometimes, do one a day. I don't know, I'm not bothered. Imagine that doesn't work, does it? You must be feminist and anti-racist. <laughs> Actually, Martin, one of the reasons is not so much you have to be feminist, it's the fact that you have to say you're feminist. And the reason, Martin, politicians say they're feminist, do you know why that is? It's because politicians, clever bastards, right, they've realised that they need to get more people to vote for them. And when they look at the country, they think, oh, fuck, we've got 50% of the population is women. Stupid bastards, we gave them the right to vote. I guess we better do something to placate to these fucking tarts so we might get them a vote because it's very difficult when you've got Ed Miliband and Nick Griffin and Nigel Farage and David Cameron. A long, low line of white people, old white fuckers all the way back and that doesn't look good. You know, so they need to say they're feminists at the least. That's it. They're probably lying. Why do you bring up anti-racist? You started this video, and every video you've ever made, ranting and raving, throwing your toys out of the pram, getting your fucking giant wife fronts in a bunch, because you're sick of being called a racist, and you're not, and you sat there, I don't hate, I don't hate black people, I don't want to be near them, I don't hate foreigners, I want a big fence, I want a golden, I want a big dome over the top of this, I want men and women to be segregated, and they get three minutes every fucking two years, I, you know, I guess I want black slaves, but I want them castrated and lobotomized as well. And now you're sitting here moaning about the fact that there's no politicians out there who are, who are openly racist. Why do you care if, in fact, you are not racist? <gasps> Did you fuck up? Which means you must want to do down white males and the culture of white males. White man's culture. What is that? What is the white man's culture? With a spoon's patriarchy, fascism, what is it, you know, genocide, what is that, Martin? Isn't, isn't the white man's culture really, though, Martin? Isn't it fat, miserable, old, fucking ignorant twacks like you who probably do have the intelligence in them to know better and to do better, but they've just lost the will to fucking try? That's it. That's the British tradition. Fucking cunts like you who sit there and try to pretend they're everything they're not and then piss and moan about people who actually are sincere, you're a wanker. While bigging up everything else. Do you get the impression when Martin said, big up, he said it with a sort of sneer, as to big up, because that's the sort of language of the old, those, all those men with big jeans and, you know, those big, and all that jewellery, and all that other, and those big houses who have those bouncing cars. But at the same time, there's a part of him who wants to say bigging up to show that he, hey kids, I know the words you use, yeah. What a cowabunga, you know, sit on it, you know. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting down with the coons, yeah. To be part of the traitor elite, you must devalue the culture of white males. The culture of white males now. What is your culture, Martin? Can you not see it? It's staring you in the face, mate. I am as white and male and British as you, my friend, and yet I will have, I've met immigrants who literally have 
just got in the country. They've got one sock and the gaffer tape that was holding them to the train. I've worked with people who, who could barely speak English. You've come over here and they've come over to do a shitty job. They have to deal with cunts like you who sit there and bitch about your white man's car. What is your culture, Martin? You don't, there's nothing about, you don't like anything. Right? You want to live in North Korea, but your little white British North Korea, where you've, everyone's got a, a Union Jack tea cosy and a Gollywog tea set or something. And you sit there eating Kendall mint cake and having and have doilies everywhere and wear cardigans, you know, a full business suit in bed. We are now approaching the point where Martin is about to go. I'm not even going to say full retard because that would be unfair to anyone with a disability. I'm barely going to even respond to this because it's beneath refutation. He doesn't deserve to be treated with the reverence of me even trying to explain. I know he's not listening. He's made this shit up. If coming up with bullshit rationalizations to justify what a fucking mountainous pile of shit you are was an Olympic sport, you, my friend, would ironically be the gold medal winner. Your heroes must be women, blacks, and homosexuals. Your heroes must be women, black, and homosexuals. They must be your heroes. But he hasn't finished yet. It gets worse. Carry on. Nelson Mandela, Rosa Parks, Alan Turing, and Gandhi are in. Yeah, he just literally named four people. One's a woman, a black woman, one's a, a man, a black man, one's a gay man, and one is an Indian man. And he, Martin, if you wanted to use that example, you should have said things like Graham Norton or, or Paris Hilton, Kim Kardashian and Miley Cyrus, Snoop Woggy Wog and MC Hammer. You should have done that one. You've literally named four people who are deserving of being viewed as heroic and iconic people. What they ultimately accomplished changed the world for the better. There were bits of dandruff that came off fucking Rosa Parks' arse crack that had more integrity and courage and dignity and humanity than you can ever remember having. Now, you're probably wondering, well, what's the other side? Who are the white male heterosexual people who you can't be have as heroes? Winston Churchill, Beethoven, Isaac Newton and Horatio Nelson are out. Isaac Newton, Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill, the man who a couple of years ago was voted the greatest Briton of all time. He's revered as the greatest Prime Minister of all time. Oh, I want to know why he thought of Isaac Newton was a good example. Yeah, because people are walking around going, yeah, fucking Isaac Newton, fuck that cracker bitch. It's typical of the white man who invent gravity and hold us motherfuckers down. These people have statues erected in the centre of London. I, no, I'm not even angry with you, Martin, now. I just feel sorry for you that this is where your life is. But he's not done, folks. Oh, yeah. If you say you like the Rolling Stones, you must quickly follow it up by saying you like reggae or hip-hop just as much. That conversation has never happened ever. There is never one example ever of anybody who has ever sat there and been so scared and worried about what they can and cannot say that they have literally got to a point where they, in a conversation about music, feel that they cannot sit there and admit that they like the Rolling Stones, one of the biggest bands of all time, because they're all white and people might think you're a fucking Nazi who wants to kill six million Jews if you say you like the Rolling Stones. So you've got to say, you've got to say you like reggae and hip-hop after Afterwards. This just shows how much of a fucking sociopathic lunatic you are. You have never had a conversation about music with anyone. You don't talk to people. You just sit there and imagine this is what people worry about. But he hasn't finished the sentence. He said reggae and hip hop. This is the other example. Oh, and Jimi Hendrix is good too. You know, Martin, you began this video by complaining and acting indignant with self-righteousness and frustration about the fact that every day of your life, every five minutes, you are attacked for being called a ra and being called a racist. You are accused of being a racist and a Nazi and a white supremacist and everything else. And you spent the first minute and a half of this video bitching about it. And if you want to know why, Martin, that sentence just there is why it all comes out. That's it right there. Because what Martin's done is he has made up a fake observation of something that he claims is every day. That is not a conversation that's happened. No one ever sits there and goes, I like this band or artist. Oh, they're all white. I better say I like this black stuff as well. That never happens. It doesn't happen, and don't even try and argue that it does. I don't care, you haven't got a friend who did it. But Martin needs to create this fake conversation. Why? Because what Martin really wants to say is that he doesn't like hip hop, that he doesn't like reggae, and he doesn't like Jimi Hendrix. Martin is basically 
trying to find a way to tell you you don't like reggae and hip-hop and Jimi Hendrix. They're not good. You're just saying that because they're black. And that's why people hate you're a racist, Martin. And they're right to think it. Because there's no one out there who has had that conversation. And you know that. But don't get up and go and rage quit now, because he ain't done. While Jimmy Savile and Gary Glitter are the embodiment of evil, it is acceptable to be a fan of Michael Jackson. You have just literally compared Michael Jackson to Jimmy Savile, the least shocking person to ever have a, a child sex scandal, and Gary Glitter. Did either of Gary Glitter or Jimmy Savile prior to the child molestation accusation, did either of them happen to spend 35 years basically being the most famous person in the world who created and wrote more top hits and sold more records and made more money and sold out more, you know, was one of the greatest entertainers, singers, songwriters, dancers, performers of all time ever. Jimmy Savile was a guy who was blatantly fucking kids. Based on his appearance, it was totally prejudiced. And he had a TV show in which he granted wishes to kids who wrote to him. And we wouldn't be talking about Jimmy Savile today if it wasn't for the fact that he, he wasn't done for it, but he was basically exposed. And Gary Glitter is the same. We would never talk about Gary Glitter because Gary Glitter was rubbish. The only reason we talk about Gary Glitter at all for the last 20 years is because Gary Glitter has been in Cambodia fucking kids. Michael Jackson, whatever he did or didn't do, because isn't it interesting that Martin J. Willett has just basically said that Michael Jackson is guilty of fucking kids. But he was never found guilty. And I'm not saying Michael Jackson's innocent. I don't, I don't have a clue. He's a fucking nutter. But the fact of the matter is, you don't stop liking someone, Martin. You don't understand this because you don't have any soul. You don't have a part. So you don't get this. No one's defending what Michael Jackson did or didn't do. But they're not going to walk away from the fact that he created some of the greatest music and songs of all time that defined people's lives. Jimmy Savile wore a tracksuit and fucked kids. That's why people have a different attitude to Michael Jackson than they do to Jimmy Savile. Martin, what's your theory on why people are more tolerant of Michael Jackson than Jimmy Savile and Gary Glitter? Because at one time he was black. There you go. Michael Jackson at one point was black. So you don't have to be black your whole life. You could change. But he, when he fucked the kids, he was white. I don't know. But guess what? He still isn't done. This next sentence is not only the worst sentence he could say in this video, it's the worst sentence someone could make right now, given the sort of current climate. This is possibly the most despicable statement Martin J. Willett has ever made. And I'm going to play it several times, because you probably won't believe it when he says... And being black is a get-out-of-jail-free card, if you have enough talent. I'm, I'm not going to repeat it, I don't want to say it. And being black is a get-out-of-jail-free card, if you have enough talent. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, if you're black, you'll get away with fucking kids, providing you have had the most successful pop music career of all time. Then you might get away with fucking kids, which you were never found guilty of. Martin, currently in America, there is a very blatantly, provably, statistically disproportionate level of black people in prison. And it's true in this country as well. And it's also provable that a lot of black people get sent to prison for harsher sentences uh, the, uh, than white people would get for the same crime. And not only that, you've still got the systematic racism. It's still there. It still exists. The oppression still there. But now, on top of that mind, we've now got this new thing, this new meme that's going around. Police are now doing this thing where they're shooting unarmed black people. In all fairness, sometimes in the case of Freddie Gray, it is kind of their fault for being so sort of threatening to these policemen by running away from them. And they get shot in the head. Or they get choked choked to the point where they pass out and can't move, and when they stop twitching, they let go of their neck and they're dead. Or they just get shot 12 times in the head because the policeman mistook the box of cigarettes for a gun. You think you're the one who's oppressed. You think that if you, only you were black, you could get away with so much more. Martin, watch your videos, Martin. Listen to what you say. You're still saying it. You're still here. No one's stopping you. No one has stopped you. And where have you got? You've got nowhere. You've got nothing to offer. If you're bitter, angry, and you wanted more out of life, you didn't get it, and you want to blame someone other than yourself, you don't want to look back on your life and the mistakes you made. I get the impression when you were younger, you had a, you were probably quite left-wing and groovy, and they probably had dreams and aspirations that you wanted to do one day, and you need to do it tomorrow, do it tomorrow, and then suddenly, bang, it's yesterday, and this is what's left. You can't look yourself in the mirror and say, you know what, my life is shit. It's not what I wanted. It's boring. I hate it. And I want to die. But 
it's my fault and you could use that to inspire people but no you create this idea where you live in a world where the government the right wing white male heterosexual government is trying to exterminate people like you so they can replace it with a load of black people and women and gays and you believe that and you want everyone else to believe it i'm not angry i just think you're so pathetic i mean i'm pathetic but I own up to it. I admit I fucked everything up. I don't sit there and create this fucking, there's, this, there's these reptilian Jews in outer space who fucking blamed it. No, it's what, your life is what it is. And you create nothing but hatred and misery. And you sit there and you can literally say out loud. And being black is a get out of jail free card if you have enough talent. I hope before you die you have this and you regret everything. But hopefully you're not going to convince enough people that it all matter. I normally don't say this. I don't care whether I get in trouble for this. I'm linking his video below. Go to it, thumb it down, and fucking put a comment telling you what to think of him. Do not flag it. Do not think it. I want that video staying up. And that should stay up. People should listen to that and think. Never mind mine. Hopefully your children won't make the same mistake. They'll just got to do the opposite of what you do. And then you'll turn out like me. Good night. May God be less. And being black is a get out of jail free card if you have enough talent. And being black is a get out of jail free card if you have enough talent. And being black I'm is right, a get out of jail free round card. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause. Talent. And being black is a get out of jail free card if you have enough talent. Because we are the English Defence League. We are the EDL. We chat about the Muslims and tell them they're going to burn in hell. Oh, tell them to go fucking back home because they all fucking smell. I'm a patriot. I'm a nationalist. I am an infidel. We're the English Defence League. We are the EDL. We've memorised every video made by Sir Pat Condell. We chant Allah is a pedo and sing Islam is evil. Whilst we're singing No Surrender in the prison cell. Let me hear you go.